Okay guys, better strap in because we've got an absolute bumper crop of perfumes this week. So um, on Saturday I started off, I wanted to just double check before I put this one up on eBay that I didn't want to keep it. So this is uh, Lundvin Me. And this is that one that's like a, a, people describe it as blueberry perfume, but I think this is very smoky, very woody. Um, so it kind of, it has like a, <laughs> to me, an ashy cigarette vibe to it. Um, and I, when I reviewed it at first, I did say, I think it's very, very beautiful. There's something really alluring about it. Um, you can tell this has been in like cold storage because it's kind of steamed up as soon as I've touched it. But um, I just wanted to make sure, just because I couldn't stop smelling it, I wanted to make sure that this wasn't just one that I preferred in winter, but it is, it's very much how I thought it was before which is there's something very magical about it but it's just not the kind of scent that I want to smell like even though I kind of like the smell so the notes in this are top notes of blueberry mandarin orange middle notes licorice tuberose and rose and the base notes of sandalwood but something about this concoction the licorice with that sandalwood I think this smells like a blueberry jam so it's like it's not a tart or fresh blueberry it's very much like a cooked blueberry you know um, and not ridiculously sweet um, so it's like a blueberry jam maybe with a slight floral tuberosey vibe but very very little of that on a you know wooden table next to a ashtray full of cigarette ash like that's what this perfume smells like to me and there's something very beautiful and magical about it I think it smells niche and I think it smells very expensive way more expensive than it actually cost to buy um, but it's like I said it's just not one that I'm really comfortable in because that kind of like ashy wooden smell just it's too overpowering it never really leaves the perfume even when the the blueberry gets a bit stronger so I'm definitely putting that one up on eBay but I just wanted to test it out again so that was Saturday morning <clears throat> I'm going to push that one over there and then on for the rest of most of the day on Saturday I was wearing this little beauty this um Adam Levine for women which is a stunning sandalwood perfume it's sandalwood and marigold um with quite a lot of vanilla so it's very sweet and I've been saving it till the weather, weather like cools down a bit because it is really really sweet um <clears throat> notes top notes spices marigold saffron and citruses middle notes australian sandalwood indian jasmine and rose petals base notes vanilla and benzoin so i mean look how many things in there are warm it's got the spices the sandalwood which is powdery in this um vanilla it's got the benzoin it's just so so sweet the definitely the strongest um flower here is marigold i don't really smell rose or jasmine in this it doesn't come across to me there's definitely saffron there's citruses in the top um and when you first spray it you do get that kind of old-fashioned kind of you know think of things like obsession you know um it's like obsession meets samsara kind of vibe when you first spray it so it smells old-fashioned but it just dries down into beautiful marigold sandalwood vanilla and benzoin like it's just it's so pretty it's just so so pretty so i i loved wearing this and i know i'm going to be i mean i've barely made a dent because i've literally only just started wearing it properly but i'm going to take a decant so i can wear it to work as well because obviously i don't want to drag this massive thing to work if i wear it because it doesn't have like the greatest lasting power like it's um i think this is an eau de parfum but it performs a bit like an eau de toilette on me that might just be me though um i can't really see what does it say eau de parfum so it is an eau de parfum, but I would say I'd want to top it up um, quite a lot, probably. Maybe that's just because I want it to be strong. <laughs> okay, so Sunday. Okay, so Sunday I was testing out. Right, so I've actually got a decant in this because on makeup.uk um they sell the jeanne en provence and they sell the refills um and these i particularly like because they're metal you can totally reuse these bottles but also it means you you're not getting plastic which i really really like the actual real bottles for these are really really nice the jeanne en provence they're kind of quite old-fashioned they um 
they're, oh, they're just they're just very very pretty they're like tall and elegant looking you know these are very light perfumes this one <laughs> watch me butcher this so Les Carnets de Jean um, a la ombre de Almandes so yeah it's Almandia um, it's basically almond essence it's the closest i've ever got to a perfume that smells like almond essence and i'm really really into it it's very light it's a skin scent but it's like a fresh out of the shower you know what this smells like actually this really reminds me of um when my husband has a bath and we've got this kind of almond milk um bath cream like um bath foam and this is what his skin smells like when he gets out of the bath. There's something so beautiful about it. It's like got a musky iris, but there's a iris, iris, a musky iris, but there's a lot of um, almond and it's not, it's not nutty in a kind of biscuity cookie way. It's like almond essence. So it's a very beautiful, oh, it's just lovely. I really like it. And I was like, you can totally go ham with it. You can spray it all over. This rechargeable was like seven pounds for 120 ml, which is why I went for this one rather than like buying a full bottle. Um, Cause I think those are maybe 15 pounds and I didn't know if I'd like it. So I thought I'd start with this knowing that I have some um, bottles from Sheen that I can just put things in. And I, it was just so refreshing in the morning. This is definitely gonna go into my kind of easy to wear at home kind of skin scents perfect for bedtime or perfect for like just fresh like out of the shower kind of smell in the morning so the notes in this top notes orange blossom bergamot mandarin orange lemon orange middle notes almond milk and praline base notes iris musk and vanilla so for me i think you're getting a slight blossomy vibe but i feel like the iris is a bit more dominant than the orange blossom but you definitely get a bit of it it's not massively citrusy i would never have guessed there was this many citruses in it definitely almond i think it's probably almond milk praline's definitely keeping it sweet along with the vanilla but it's not like ridiculously sweet because it's so light and then yeah i mean musk is definitely you can definitely sense musk in there it's so pretty it's, it's it jumped up into one of my like favorite almonds it but it's very very light it says it's eau de parfum, but it's all of these perfumes I think are supposed to be very delicate. Like this is super delicate, like fully ethereal. Like it's got that vibe to it. It's like what, a, you know, a fairy or an angel would smell like, you know. <laughs> so that was um, morning. Um, let me just push that one over there because it's just a decant. And then, yeah, in the evening, like, because I wore this, actually I wore this in the, throughout most of the day. Um, and then just in the evening, I just topped up with... Um, a bit of snow fairy i was just in the mood so i just topped up with a bit of snow fairy and again smells like sweets so what i find interesting about snow fairy is because it only comes out it's like a christmas special at lush i always kind of think of it as a christmas scent but realistically this is quite a light and sweet fresh scent so i bought it um as soon as it came out like a month or so ago um and i've had you know i've had all kinds of snow fairy products for years and years and years and years but I think like realistically, I like this better when it's not so cold, just because it's like, it's quite a fresh scent in a way, even though it's really sweet. So um, I think I'm probably, this this for me, like I think this is really gonna shine a bit more in spring, summer personally, um, and it should last long enough for that. It's still fun to spritz it up, but I think just, I think when it's getting colder, I don't like it as much like just to wear generally, just because I feel like it's so light. Um, but it's not light in a wintry way. I find it light in a spring summer way, but anyway. So um, I, I wore that one again and I, I genuinely thought, oh, I think maybe the season, I, I'll save this for a different season now. So I'm probably gonna save it for a different season. Um, yeah, the notes in that one are cotton candy, sweet notes, cherry, vanilla, and pear. And it really just yeah, it smells like sweeties, super fun. So Monday to work. This is such an easy reach. I had this in my first like light autumnal perfumes. This is L'Occitane Herbe, and this is the one that really reminds me of La Belle's Dariki Liberty Fizz. It's like a beautiful, um, sweet, green, fruity, slightly citrusy smell. Um, it's really, it's really hard to pick out what this smells like from the notes because the notes are 
bonkers. So the notes in this are top notes, bergamot, pink pepper, ambrette, middle notes of blackberry, nettle blossom and nettles, rose hip, clary sage, base notes, grass, grass, musk, honey, cashmere and wheat and cumarin. So it's got a syrupy sweetness to it but because it's got a lot of blackberry bergamot, I definitely can sense some rose hip. There's a lot of greenness from the grass, but I think it kind of comes across a bit like tomato leaf does in Liberty Fizz. So I think there's a sharpness from the blackberry, which is similar to the kind of raspberry vibe you get in that other one. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's so easy to wear, but because it's got that slight syrupiness, it works really nicely in autumn, I find. And I can wear this, I can wear this any time of year. This is an all year perfume, really. And I, it's been kind of sitting in my cupboard for ages because I wanted to wear my labels on um, for my registry office wedding. And this is so similar to it that I didn't want to be wearing it all the time because I wanted that to be like a nice surprise for my husband because that would be my kind of my signature scent of choice if I if it wasn't discontinued. But this one is so easy to wear. It's so gorgeous. It's one of my more expensive perfumes. But however, I did get this on eBay for like... I think it was probably 35 pounds which is totally reasonable for l'occitane it lasts quite well it's really not bad at all like i mean i think maybe i did my wrists at lunchtime and then i gave myself a full spritz um after uh, on the way out of work which is totally normal for me um yeah it's just so fresh so easy to wear such an easy reach it's so pretty love that one um what have we got oh yeah oh yes okay so um, I think this is pretty much empty now. So this little sample here is from Bloom Perfumery, um, which is a, lo uh, a London perfume shop that sells kind of niche and unusual perfumes or it's in so it's um, well, Soho, technically it's Covent Garden. And I got this one ages ago because this is a Brocard perfume. So this is Colour Feeling Orange by Brocard. Um, and I wore it all day because I'd already spritzed it and thought, I think I probably want to buy this. And on Tuesday, I was going to meet some friends for dinner in Covent Garden. So it's so pretty. I knew I'd love it. The thing is, I, I, I ordered the sample because I knew that I would love it. So the notes according to this actual thing from bloom so this should be the official brockard notes are amber cedarwood cedrat chili husk tomato mango marigold orange oris patchouli rose saffron and sandalwood so i wore it all day and then i literally i literally had to run because they were about to close by the time i got there because of traffic issues so i ran to bloom perfumery to buy a full bottle so these are thirty-one pounds, but if you do, if you do get, um, if you buy one of these, these I think are three pounds. Um, they will take the three pounds off when you buy the full bottle if you, if you do like so that so they've got the little code here and stuff. So it's like you can just go in and you can buy the whole thing, but. I just really enjoyed wearing it, and I knew I'd like it because I'm a bit obsessed with mar with marigold. And what I find about this is it sort of reminds me, it's like in the middle of my Marigold and Gardenia from, what's it called, uh, Vera Wang Embrace range that I absolutely love, which is pretty much like a one of my signature scents because I can reach for that any time. And the Adam Levine, which is basically Marigold and Sandalwood. This is kind of right in between those things because I always think of my Embrace Marigold and Gardenia as, um, melon and gardenia and that one has mango in it as well um so let's get the bottle out this has not yet been sprayed actually this one i'm just gonna it is lovely though i can smell it from the from the tip okay there we go very nice slick modern bottle very pretty lovely color but it smells exactly like this color looks so out of interest i'm just gonna see what this says so I'm just going to compare. Okay, all right. They have they've got it they've got it listed differently on on um, Fragrantica. So here they say marigold, orange, amber, ground cherry, mango, chili pepper, um, saffron, iris, citron, sandalwood, cedar, patchouli, and rose. So interesting. Well, so they've got um. Okay, 
they've got iris listed instead of oris oris is obviously iris root but um i think it's a slightly different vibe it's still definitely got a powderiness to it but this is very to me this is very much marigold orange mango sandalwood with some spice when you first spray it you definitely get the patchouli and you get like way more of the other notes but it dries down to be very sweet it's like a really interesting take on like a, a fruity sandalwood marigold perfume i really really liked wearing this a lot it's brocard and i find all brocards don't really last very long this one because it's quite sweet it's a little bit heavier it is definitely like autumnal so it lasted a bit longer than some of the other brocards that i've got but it still didn't last for ages it definitely turned into a skin scent after like an hour or so but you know it's under it's pretty much 30 quid or under um unfortunately i'm just going to put it out there bloom are really annoying because if you want to buy a full bottle and you can't actually go there it's like nine pounds to get it delivered and i'm telling you i've had a few experiences with them now they take absolutely ages to actually send anything after you've ordered it so you're paying nine pounds and you're gonna to have to wait like a fortnight even if it's going from london to london so that really irritates me and i don't really like talking about them but in the uk at the moment you can't really get brocard anywhere else which is very annoying um anyway so <laughs> i really like it though i really like it i wouldn't have run to the perfume shop before it closed at six o'clock otherwise like it's just really i found it really easy to wear and really pleasant but it definitely it's a little bit harsher when you first spray it because you get you get like um you get more of the citron you get the patchouli you get some of the harsher notes you definitely get a bit of warmth from the chili pepper but you get a bit of the kind of bitterness from the chili pepper in the top as well but when it dries down it gets super super warm and cozy and sweet and lovely and um I got my friend to sniff me and she said it was super pretty but i don't know if she was just being polite you know we are british so um oh yes yeah, so randomly <laughs> now i when i was walking i was basically walking from bloom perfumery um down to leicester square because actually i mean it says covent garden but the place we went we went to mildred's which is a vegan restaurant because my friend is vegan and it was her birthday so we went to mildred's and that's actually technically that's right next to leicester square so i was walking from covent garden to leicester square and i walked past a tk max and i was like i didn't even know there was a leicester square tk max so anyway i went in and i looked at the perfumes and they had so many it was so much better than my local one it was so much better than the one that's actually on oxford street oh my god they had so many perfumes so i was totally overwhelmed they had like a women's secret one they had loads of the miller harris ones they also had this which i've heard so much about dolce garden and they had it for 30 pounds 29.99 in store i think it's 31 i i just saw it come up on tk max the um web well, the web shop you know what i mean online <laughs> and it was 31 pounds on there so slightly more expensive but i decided to try it because everyone talks about this being like quite sweet coconut -y, even though it's called gar garden it doesn't really like that's a weird name for it but i don't like this perfume i i bought it obviously not knowing what it smells like because i also have never been able to get like a sample in the uk of this and i figured this is something because i know it's been discontinued that uh, definitely i'll be able to sell this on if i didn't like it you know um and for like a really good price so yeah i'm not keen on this i tried this um in the evening when i got back because i had it in my bag because i bought it that night and i was just like yeah i'm not sure about this um i will have to unfortunately get it up on for a grand because it does look like i forgot to take a screenshot but this yes i can smell coconut when i first spray it i can definitely get a coconut vibe and it is sweet but it's really floral um really floral and and has like a sharpness on top of the kind of quite sweet coconut and I don't like the flowers in this. I think that's the problem that I have. It's not that I think it's like super unpleasant. It's just not something that I could, I, I didn't feel comfortable having it on my skin. And I thought, oh, it might dry down and, and change and get different. It didn't, it didn't. It got more floral the more it dried down and the coconut went away. Yeah, and it's powdery. Yeah, okay. So the top notes here, Magnolia, Mando, uh, Mandonian, <laughs> Mandalorian, why not? Magnolia, Mandarin Orange and Neroli. 
Middle notes, coconut, frangipani, ylang ylang. Base notes, vanilla, absolute, almond milk and sandalwood. It's powdery. It's got a sharp white floral vibe to it on top of the creamy coconut and the vanilla. And the almond is really powdery. And I just, yeah, this, um, I can I can understand why p other people like it. So I can, I can smell it and I can recognise that there's something pretty about it, but it's just not for me. It's just not, it's not my kind of scent. It doesn't suit me. I don't feel comfortable in that one. So it was fun to try it, but I'm definitely just gonna pass that on to someone else. All right, next day. So, oh, um, I think there's a couple I'm gonna have to talk about just at the end. So I wore Stash Privé. I've only got, I've actually got two bottles of this. They're both little 30 mils because you can get them for like seven pounds at the moment on, I think it's called the Beauty Store UK, worth Googling. Um, I really had a good think about it this time <laughs> because again, like sometimes I buy things, I like them. I'm just like, oh yeah, it's just really nice. And then when I talk to you guys, I really want to be able to explain very specifically what it smells like. So I'll read you the notes. The top notes are quince, grapefruit, pink pepper, middle notes, sage and Tunisian orange blossom, base notes of birch, musk and Haitian vetiver. Now this is another really easy reach. It's very easy to wear. The notes make it sound like it might be a bit odd, but it isn't, and I'll tell you what, <laughs> so I was wearing it and I was thinking two things about it. One, the more it dries down, the more it starts to smell like a body lotion, like, but in a way that I, the most comfortable of any that I've smelled. So like, I've smelled the Jill Sander Softly and the, most recently, the Burberry Brit Rhythm, and they both have like a body lotion smell. They smell cr like a cream, like a body cream in the base um, when they dry down. I smelled something else recently that had a bit of a body care vibe as well. But this one, there's something about it that's really comfortable and easy to wear for me. Um, and that's just Sarah Jessica Parker, man. Like her musks really suit me for some reason. So I was wearing it and I was like, ah, okay, yes. It has a, a recognizable overall scent profile, this one, which is slightly similar to Chanel Chance Tondra and Marc Jacobs Daisy. But it's kind of, it's like those, maybe slightly less floral, but like in a body lotion. <laughs> so if you if you like those perfumes, this would be a really safe blind buy, I think, because I think it's got that same kind of vibe. Oh, there's some Sunday shenanigans going on outside. It's so classy and pretty and clean smelling it's very very easy easy going um stash uh, privé did i say it was called stash privé the pink one um also so cute um very comfortable actually lasts as actually the stashes are all pretty good they are supposed to be this one particular obviously it's called private it's supposed to be a skin scent it's supposed to be a close to the skin small scent bubble but it lasts for quite a long time like i mean i, I don't feel like i need to keep topping this up constantly it's like again spritz on the wrist at lunch full respray before i leave work and again that's totally normal for me and it's just very clean it's got like you can sense that there's sage in it. It's It doesn't smell hugely woody. And it you have got like, you've got a quince and grapefruity vibe, but it's just, it's not sharp. Like it doesn't have a horrible sharpness to it. It's very smooth. It's got a sweetness. I'm not really sure where the sweetness is coming from, to be honest. Um, maybe it's like a sweet orange blossom, I don't know. But it's just very comfortable. It's really nice to wear. But yeah, it's definitely got that slight, Chanso Tondra, Mark Jacobs Daisy sort of profile, but I don't massively like either of those perfumes, but I really like this one. So this is my version of that profile that I find really wearable. Um, oh, I just I just flipped through and I found this one. I, I thought I might have taken a screenshot anyway, never mind. So on Thursday, I was working from home because of the tube strike. So I wore this beaut okay let me just have a this isn't on for a grand occur. this is a cheap cheap perfume <laughs> so this is called oh look at the color of it look at that purple i'm obsessed i love this bottle it's trying to look bougie but it's not it's not bougie really so this is indulgent moments 
raspberry and tuberose and it's an eau de parfum it's by um a company i think called like palm palm springs beauty or something like that but for some weird reason i see these on like a lot of pharmacists and like discount sites in the uk but just this one i've never really seen any of the other um flavors other scents from this range um but i see the raspberry and tuberose all the time everywhere and i just like i mean i think it was probably including postage it was like 15 pounds maybe and this is 125 ml so it's a big bottle um this smells like bubblegum to me so <laughs> this is nice because i found my bubblegum scent and i think it's something to do with the fact this is a very bubblegummy um tuberose but because of the raspberry, it really actually takes it into full bubblegum realm for me. And I really like it. Um, it doesn't last very long. Definitely doesn't last very long. I think you'd like three, four hours max and you'll have to respray it. So like I wore this because I was working from home. Um, but if I was going to actually wear this out of the house, I'd just take a decant because it's so massive anyway. I'd take a, a little, you know, one of the pump decant bottles with me and I'd just keep reapplying it. And I'm happy to reapply it because it's a really fun smell. Um, so the notes in this, if you like bubblegummy tuberose, I think you'll love this. So indulgent moments, raspberry and tuberose. The top notes are raspberry, cassis and mandarin. The middle notes are tuberose, gardenia and star anise. The base notes are musk, sandalwood, and vanilla cream. And it's the vanilla cream that's really making this like super special. It's got a beautiful creaminess to it, but it's got full, full raspberry kind of black currant and um, tuberose, very bubblegum and tu bubblegummy tuberose. So it's, yeah, it's like properly reminds me of bubblegum, but in a way that I find very wearable and not too sickly. And I just think that vanilla cream in the base just, just makes it feel quite luscious now it does not smell expensive but to be honest i've never smelled a bubblegum smelling perfume that i think smells expensive so you know even the ones that are expensive there's something about that bubblegummy flavor that stops it smelling expensive so i don't care i just really enjoyed wearing this i think it's a really nice perfume it's a super bargain and um yeah, I mean, where did I get this from? Maybe Health Farm or something? I got it from one of the pharmacies. But if you just do a search for indulgent moments, raspberry and tuberose, you'll find it really easily, I'm sure. Um, yeah, just just really nice. I really liked it. I thought it was so fun. I'm trying to think if I've got anything else to say about it, but I think that's pretty much it. Um, such a fabulous colour. Like, oh, you see? love it oh yes that's what i was going to say i do have another tuberose perfume that i that i like quite a lot which is um what's it called ted baker extraordinary woman xo the original one in the purple bottle but that one is much more floral so that's a bubblegummy tuberose as well but it's very floral this one has that fruitiness and again like i like a bubblegummy tuberose i like i like any tuberose that smells like the tuberose in poison so you know that's just my kind of vibes and this one is more fun like more girly maybe a bit more kind of youthful and the um the Ted Baker one is a bit more mature. It's a bit more flowery, but it's still very like bubblegummy tuberose. So, okay, now we've got in the evening. So I've oh, I've got a million of I've got a million of these now. I had a bit of a um, something didn't turn up from eBay. I asked for a refund. Ordered it from somewhere else, and then they the people I asked for a refund sent me one, but then they felt bad that it hadn't turned up, so they sent me two, and I'd already ordered a a batch of three so i've got five of these right now um i will just put them in bundles but english laundry number seven now the notes in this sounded pretty cool but pff, um i don't know about this tell you what it lasted forever this is one of those that i think for me has too much of that citrus mixed with sweet vanilla -y creaminess which just has that kind of wanted girl vibe that i don't like that kind of the sharp bits of the the sharp notes are kind of sitting on top of the other notes in a way that I find clashes. I don't know if I'm going to feel different about this in summer, which might be the case because it also there's a slight vibe of the Guess by Marciano where I there's something I like about it, but I feel like maybe maybe I need. I mean, I will keep one of these to try in hot weather, but this the notes in this are top notes of apricot, pear, melon, and jasmine 
Middle notes of almond, gardenia and jasmine. Base notes, whipped cream, vanilla, sandalwood and musk. So firstly, there is quite a lot of jasmine in this and it's not my favourite flower as everyone who watches me normally knows. Um, but I get a lot of apricot and it's tangy. It's very, very tangy, this perfume. But then the base is slightly creamy with a lot of vanilla. So when it's really really deeply dried down it does smell pretty good but i'll tell you what the projection on this is interesting because i could really smell this i could really really smell this and i think i actually was wearing this when i went out of the house and i was really aware of wearing it it was strong and i was wearing a mask so this one lasted quite a long time it smelled pretty strong i think this is i assume this is let me look on the thing this is an eau de parfum i assume so because it's pretty strong does it say weird this is a 10 mil and you can get these for like three pounds on ebay in the uk it's harder to get the full bottles oh it weirdly doesn't say oh no i'm being blind there you go oh de parfum i thought so it's pretty strong um so i'm going to keep hold of this but i'm just like i think i think sometimes when you see whipped cream in a perfume when you see like almond cream vanilla musk sandalwood you think it's going to be a really creamy one but the top notes here are so tangy they're so fruity and tangy that for me they clash i just think they clash i don't think that they're blended very nicely they don't smell particularly well blended on my skin or on the card however if you've watched me before you know i've got a bit of an attitude about that kind of thing because i really don't like wanted girl um i don't like um what's another kind of oh like a uh, dior um, poison girl so there's like that that kind of vibe where it's got the kind of sharp fruits with like a caramel base or like sharp fruits with like you know it's just it's just not it's just not my vibe so i wasn't too keen on that and um i'll keep one of them and i'll i'll put chuck the other ones into some bundles because i've got so many of them it's stupid then i wore on friday just because again it's a really easy reach i just wore the prerogative that and that's the ego flanker but to be honest i i do really love this one but my favorite is probably the original it's just i've got a bigger bottle of this one so you know i i reach for it more often just because i know i need to use this one up quicker because it's massive so this is creamy warm it's got like a slightly caramelized vibe even though there isn't caramel in this apparently so the notes here apricot sandalwood amberwood coffee arum lily saffron goji berries and pink pepper and if you know what the original uh, prerogative smells like from britney spears this smells like that but with like really amped up fruits so it's got way more apricot and it's got way more goji berries but it it doesn't have it's not sharp it's still like sweet and it's not like tangy but it does have a fruitiness to it so it's really easy to wear it smells really good it lasts like maybe five five hours maybe it's not it's not as long lasting as a lot of other britney spears but um it's for me it's way more comfortable it doesn't smell quite as synthetic as most of her other perfumes do to me um so i just i just think it's really easy to wear i like it i don't get huge amounts of coffee with with either of them i get a little hint of coffee but it, because this one's more fruity maybe this one's moving a little bit further towards kind of a slight black opium vibe which also you know coffee fruits very sweet this one's just more creamy lighter easier to wear um just a generally slightly nicer scent profile i think than than black opium but okay so the last thing to talk about is one i tested in the evening and let me get up the notes so this right here is interesting this is a passion by makeup revolution now i only have this because i bought something else and i needed to spend a certain amount of money to get free delivery and i'd always rather get like a little small bottle of something you know than pay delivery um so this passion by revolution makeup revolution this is a what is it a 10 mil it's an eau de toilette pretty insistent though for an eau de toilette this is supposed to be a dupe of Tom, 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 Tom Ford. I'm not Scottish. Uh, of Tom Ford's, um, what's it called? Black Orchid. Okay, so 
I'm finding this very fascinating because I like this perfume. <laughs> I think this perfume's nice. Um, and I think Black Orchid can really has really divided people, but I've not actually smelt it before. And I don't know, this ha doesn't have a huge amount of stuff on Fragrantica, but all of the votes say, yes, this smells like Tom Ford Black Orchid. Um, and I just, I just assumed I would hate that perfume because there's so many notes in it, it seems wild. Chances are I would. It might just be that this is like a super, super low key version. But the notes in this say woodsy notes, spices, earthy notes, amber and chocolate. The notes in Tom Ford's Black Orchid are truffle, gardenia, blackcurrant, ylang ylang, jasmine, bergamot, mandarin, orange, amalfi, lemon. Middle notes are orchid, spices, gardenia, fruity notes, ylang ylang, jasmine and lotus. <laughs> The base notes are Mexican chocolate, patchouli, vanilla, incense, amber, sandalwood, vetiver, and musk. So, I mean, I'm guessing that Passion has way more notes than it actually lists, but there's way, yeah, there's definitely way more going on. And I would say the notes for um, Black Orchid make more sense of this kind of, because you don't really get perfumes with that few notes that have this kind of smell. But weirdly, I recognise this smell. This has definitely got a vibe of something that I've either had or have and I've forgotten about. Or something I've smelt like when I was young. It's not an, un it's not an unusual scent to me, this, for some reason. Definitely an evening scent for me. But it's got a kind of powdery sweetness. I wouldn't really even know where to start with what this smells like. <laughs> um orchid maybe there is a slight fruitiness a slight spice a slight chocolatiness i would imagine like the patchouli in this must be very chocolatey because i'm not getting like a big blast of patchouli it does a real powdery sandalwood in this really really powdery ylang ylang definitely it's just it's it's just quite a kind of sultry pretty perfume like i think i could easily wear this in the evening you know on a night out. I don't think I'd need a full bottle of it, but um, it was, I think maybe five quid for the 10 mil. And I think it's probably only about 10 pounds for the full size bottle. And they're pretty cool bottles, the uh, Revolution, Makeup Revolution ones. Um, so yeah, I kind of like it. If this is actually accurate for what Tom Ford's Black Orchid smells like, then I think I'd probably like Black Orchid. Although I know a lot of people have a problem with the truffle note in that. So it's very possible that if you like that, but you don't like the truffle note, then this version might be a good one. Cause I wouldn't, I wouldn't smell this and think it smells like truffles. Um, and obviously truffles is a very musky and earthy smell and taste, let's be real. But it's kind of magical, this one. I really quite like it. I, there's something addictive about this smell, but it does smell quite mature, but it doesn't smell, it smells mature, but not vintage. Does that make sense? It doesn't have like a Chanel number no. five vibe. It doesn't have like a kind of 70s or like earlier perfume vibe. It doesn't smell old fashioned but it smells grown up. It doesn't smell youthful. This, you know, these here, these smell really youthful. Um, and then these kind of, they're a bit more mature, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, I kind of like it. I'm quite surprised. I just assumed that I'd sniff it and go, oh, is that what black orchid smells like? Ew. Um, <laughs> but I think it's quite nice. I mean, I'm never going to get black orchid because the, the cost of those perfumes is absolutely, I mean, it's frankly immoral. But um, I, I, I think it's, uh, I think that might be a safe bet. So yeah, I think Passion by Makeup Revolution is quite a sultry and mature evening kind of, lady wearing black kind of smell you know I think it's really pretty so yeah I think that's everything I, I there was a lot going on this week so I don't know I mean this week I might have a bit of a calmer one just <laughs> we'll see how we go but yeah it was it was really fun loads of stuff to try and um some stuff I'm not keeping and some stuff that I love so yeah I'm, I'm just super happy to have that brocard one I also have brocard color feeling red so I will do a wear test of that one as well that one's got like cherry and cinnamon but my overall impression of it is that it's it's got a it's quite similar to the orange one but not quite as nice that's what I feel at the moment but I need to do a full wear, wear test of that one as well but anyway um I hope everyone had a nice week and I'm sorry this was nearly 40 minutes long but it was a it was a big batch this month uh week even <laughs>